Hey guys, Stephanie here with the Aeroponic Tower Channel. Today we're going to go vlog style and I'm just going to show you some things that are going on on our little simple living homestead and a rustic log cabin life. So the towers are in the garage, which means bad lighting, but they're inside and it's been so cold and the food that was left outside has not handled it well. So I'm really grateful that we got these inside. So I'm going to take you guys on a little tour, talk about some things that we're growing. I'm still getting two more towers in here. So I'm going to be starting some seeds, not with you guys today. I'm going to do that in the background, but if you're curious about what I am starting, um, I made a video, the last video that posted where I showed how to choose seeds and understand seeds and shared some of the things that I'm going to be growing. Um, on one of my towers. It's specifically kind of, I would say like a juicing tower because I want to share a lot more juicing content and it's some things I'm growing to go in my book on greens to grow for maximum health and wellness because there's some really cool stuff. And I'm doing an entire tower of peppers too. So running some experiments on peppers grown indoors. So lots of fun things. This garage is a hot mess. We are transitioning, expanding my son's gym. He's a competitive athlete. I have a new stove I'm going to show you guys that's going into the rustic log cabin kitchen because that's getting sort of uh, overhauled this winter. I'm removing our kitchen cabinets that are old and have doors that are falling off and replacing the kitchen with furniture because it just functions better in my opinion when you have a really small house and I don't really have any interest in spending you know tens of thousands of dollars re-outfitting a kitchen with fancy cabinets. I can do it with thrifted furniture and make it look really awesome. So I'll show you guys my stove because it is so cool. So let's take a little tour and we need to harvest a lot of baby greens. I have a party to go to and my friends always put me in charge of the vegetarian dishes and the salads when we have these parties, which I'm so grateful for because I can grow it. So we're going to do a big harvest and I'll just show you guys around. Now it is a mess because we're sort of renovating the gym and everything in this space. But I think it's important to also show the reality of growing food because if we're waiting for something to be perfect, it'll never happen. So I get the food growing and I just chip away at what I can. I need to start some new seeds. That's the next most important task. And if that means some things in this garage have to stay a little messy until I get to them, so be it. We have food growing and that's what really matters. So here is my home tower. We've got our lights on. I love these lights. It's actually one of the reasons that sold me back on tower gardens were these lights because I was having such a hard time figuring out a lighting system for growing food in this garage and these just answered the solution because they move. I can grow big things around them, but I can also move them out of the way when we want to film. So lettuce and baby greens, such an amazing way to grow food really fast and save a ton of money at the grocery store. These were outside when it was cold and then it was hot and then it was cold and then they were out of a tower for a while and then they were moved into this tower. They should have been harvested two weeks ago. So some of them have some bad leaves and things. So we want to try and harvest our food at its peak. All food's going to have a peak and then it's going to start to decline. And when I go on forums, I like to go on Facebook forums to see what kind of questions people are asking. A lot of the time the advice will be give it more light. Maybe your pH is off. Um, what are the ones? Light, pH, usually those two things are recommended as the problem when you start to have like browning on your lettuce leaves or something like that. But really the most, most of the time, it's not the lights, never is the pH a problem. I rarely even check my pH. I can tell if it's off because the plants will change colors a little bit. But the, typically the problem is your food's just old. You reach that peak and you would let it go down the decline so we want to catch our food at that peak and i think sometimes it might be that you think something is supposed to grow this big and it can grow that big but not all food whether you're growing in the soil or in a tower not every seed is going to be like gigantic sometimes seeds get stressed the plants get stressed during the growing season like they were outside inside cool hot and it can cause them to just reach their max at a smaller size and so it may look like it's not quite ready and that it could get bigger but actually it's gone on the decline. If you start to see signs of you know some lettuce leaves that are getting a little bit of browning go ahead and harvest that and put a new seedling in. You should have seedlings in your grow station at all times that can replace that and that way you get the most nutrient dense foods onto your plate. So that's what we're going to do now. I need to really wanted to bring my bowl 
I'm gonna show you guys also how to keep your greens crisp because I'm not gonna be eating these until tomorrow at our dinner party. So we wanna keep our greens nice and crisp in the fridge. And I'm trying to think of what we can harvest into because I forgot my baskets and the bowls I wanted to use. Let's see here. I need to move my stash of baskets out here. They were in a, they're in our porch because we were growing outside, but now we're growing indoors, so they need to come in here. All right, this is probably not gonna be big enough, but we'll make it work. So first things first, I have a beet. Beets grow amazing on a tower. I've got them all over. I'm constantly starting beets so that we always have beets to eat. But only, I like to do three to five per rock wool, um, and that usually gives you about three or four beets when they germinate. And this one only one took because my beet seeds are a little old. So as I harvest this, I'm gonna go ahead and move this into the baby green section. I'm not quite ready to eat it yet, but I don't want it taking up a standard grow port. That doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's go through here. These are our baby greens, heavily seeded. We've got some chijimusai in here. I'm gonna, while it's on the tower, pick off these bad leaves. Rarely do I have bad leaves like this on baby greens. This is just neglect and from them being kind of shuffled around indoor and out. There might be one or two bad leaves. These have more than I like to see. Okay. And then we're just gonna pull the whole thing out. So you can tell they look a little bit leggy. These hit their prime and are on the decline, but we still have gorgeous, like there's nothing wrong with this lettuce. It's just the plant as a whole can start to look a little bit scraggly when we go past that peak. We're gonna take all of these. This one just doesn't look good at all. And again, these are Actually, there's some good leaves on that. I am going to harvest that. This is not because of growing indoors or anything. Actually, my baby greens grow amazing indoors, better than outside. It's just because they were inside outside. All right, let's put this beet in. Huh. So fun. And I have some Mabuna, which is a mustard. I think it's a mustard. We're gonna stick in. So as we take things out, we're just going to add in new starts. And we always have starts ready. It's the key to interval planting and having food. put them in these baskets when I'm keeping the roots on because they can smush. So I'm just gonna move those over. The rock wool's just heavy and these are delicate greens. Nice big bundles. So I'm just trying to make sure I'm not sticking rock wool on my fresh lettuce. Some of these look super rough, but it's okay. Sometimes that happens. This is still going to give us the equivalent of two plastic tubs of baby greens from the grocery store, those organic tubs, or the equivalent of like one of the big um, Sam's Club versions or Costco versions. So lots of food. I'm also going to harvest some other varieties of things as we take our tour just to add to this salad because I like to take the baby greens but then add in some Swiss chard and some mustards and mizunas and things that are going to offer some texture. I've got some um, endive that might be ready. So I think I got all of I think I got all of the baby greens. Yeah those are all gone. I got all of those out so now let's just go gather a few things. Um, I'm gonna get some beet leaves. Beet leaves are the same as Swiss chard, same family. And they're super nutrient dense and amazing flavor. So those will make a great addition to our um, salad. 
And we're gonna plant these out with some chijimusai. Which is the bok choy. More mabuna. Mabuna is, I use it as a spinach replacement, really nutrient dense, very mild flavor when you harvest it young. We have some chijimusai that is, I like to plant these four to six seeds per rock wool, and for whatever reason they didn't take, so I'm just gonna combine them. And we do that by ripping open the rock wool. Oh, these are so wet. Okay, and I had some that just fell out of the rock wool when I picked them up. All right, so now we have a nice bundle of baby greens. There's six of them in there now. That'll give us a lot more food a lot faster. I like to let Chijimusai grow to full size because it's gorgeous and big, but that's a time-consuming process. So doing it in here as smaller greens just gets you food faster, which is helpful when you're growing indoors, right? Okay, so... Let's just walk around and see what we can find. All right, let's walk around. You're gonna hear the towers on. Let's just see how things are looking. So this is the tower that was struggling the most because it was things that were outside that I transitioned. And plants just don't like that. Um, I have a new plan for next year. But if you have to do it, it's not the end of the world. A lot of it did transfer over well, and you might just have to go through, this is oregano, a transition of letting it get adjusted, trim up anything that doesn't look super great. Let's say this looks really good. So this tower and this one were the ones that were struggling the most. Let's harvest some parsley. And actually harvesting off your plants takes some stress off of them. And we can put this in our salad. All right, on this tower, my leeks are growing. They're actually growing back. And I cut this pepper down and it's growing back really well and already blooming in just a couple of weeks. So I've been running an experiment on if it's good to cut peppers back so far yes this one's doing really well my stinging nettle i cut it back and it took off completely it's like really really doing well so we'll be able to harvest that the thing with stinging nettle indoors you don't want it to get much bigger than this um, which is maybe two of my hand sizes you could do three but it's gonna sting you if you touch it. So you just have to be mindful of that. So I like to cut it back um, to about three inches high, the whole thing, and we harvest that. You can just boil it right in water and make a tea. So you don't have to turn it into anything. You don't have to dehydrate it. You can just cut that and make your tea for the day. You could come and cut a section of it every day and it would just keep growing and you can drink your nettle infused water with your fresh nettles every single day. So superfood, amazing. Look at the beets. The beets are fabulous. This is a purple Merlot Napa cabbage, doing great. Nice lime green lettuce up at the top. Here is a tomato that I transitioned. All the micro dwarfs got disease outside because we had all this crazy rain. Um, I trimmed this one back and it's doing great in here. So hopefully we'll have tomatoes soon. Eggplant that's blooming. So yeah, things are, I wouldn't say I love the look of all my plants, but it's because they've had a lot of trauma. So they're doing amazing for the amount of trauma I put them through and they're gonna come back and they're gonna bounce back quickly. Now, some of this lettuce, I may just go ahead and harvest ahead of that as well. You know what, I am. I'm gonna harvest this one because they're small, but because of all the stress they went through, they're not 
as lovely as I'd like them to be. And I think I can put something else in its place that will do better. Oops. I'm gonna go ahead and harvest both of these. I'm gonna leave one on. And just see the brown? So the limey lettuce, this is a leaf lettuce, it's prone to the brown on the tips like that. A uh, couple of reasons, you get salt built up when there's age to plants. Lettuce can have like a mineral build up and it'll turn the tips brown. This just is stressed. It got stressed from the indoor and outdoor and we're just gonna harvest that. And we'll add something else to that spot. No point in wasting this. The longer I let it stay on there, if it's showing these signs of brown tips, the worse it'll get. So we wanna eat it you know, now while it's still really nice. Even though technically it's not its full size and hasn't reached its full potential. So I'm gonna put some kale in those spots because I've been craving kale and we don't have any kale right now. All right, and just like that, we've got more food growing. All right. So over here, this one was a transition tower too. Now that I'm looking at them, they're all transition towers except for one and then two that I'm working on that are outside. So a few things going on here. Um, the green beans went through, these are uh, edamame beans. They went through total shock outside because I left them in a frost, but they seem to be growing new growth. So I'm gonna let them carry on. Same with the green beans. I didn't have time to start new green beans, so I decided just to see what would happen. And so far, they're bouncing back. I'm gonna go ahead and start new green beans. I'm not gonna bank on these being our most abundant green beans, but I had the plants, so why not? Just let them try to bounce back. Okay, over here, we have a tomato that I cut back completely that's growing back. Running a little experiment on that. I've got my Aloe, aloe is a mega superfood. It's so happy in this garage. It hated it outside. I left it in the cold. It was so miserable. But on here, it's doing really, really well. So aloe is doing great. We've got lavender down there, eggplant. This one's a transition one, so we'll see. But these are new blooms. So it looks like it's gonna work. This is my lavender and rosemary they're doing fine right here this is zucchini so zucchini when it starts to grow indoors on a tower is like this crunchy you hear that the leaves are so dry and it's weird but it does this every time i grow it and then it starts to adapt and then it grows amazing so if you have this issue just carry on because I don't know what it is. It does it with the uh, cucumbers as well, curly and weird, but then they adapt and they turn absolutely gorgeous. So we just pretend it's not crunchy and carry on. Okay, this tower here is amazing. I love this one because everything's new and happy and not traumatized. But we have some container size peas I think this is the Tom Thumb. So these get bushy. I do two seeds per rock wool, sometimes three. I did three in this one. No, two. Two seeds per rock wool. And they get bushy, not viney. And I haven't had a tremendous amount of harvest from them, but I was growing outdoors. So I'm curious to see how they do indoors, and I'll keep you guys posted. Working on finding a way to get peas, because everyone loves peas. These are all my micro dwarf tomatoes. They're so happy. These are kale, peas, endive, love endive. More tomatoes. This tower is mostly tomatoes. There's 12 varieties in here. And I did two seeds per rock wool because again, we're not fighting for nutrients when we're growing in an aeroponic tower garden. The roots are in here and they can get everything they need. We're only fighting for space and because they're micro dwarfs, I wanted to maximize the amount of fruit I can get while um, 
using less grow while using less grow port so that's why i did two seeds per rock wool and i will show you guys as they grow but i'll be pruning some of the leaves just to keep them nice and clean and to make sure they have room so they're just gorgeous look at these some are bigger than others because some are like hanging basket varieties some are super dwarfy container varieties we've got this frizzle kale so this has some yellowing but I checked my pH and it's not from that. I think it's just a couple of leaves, like that one was broken. Sometimes the leaves get damaged. So we'll just take those off. Other side of this tower, endive, basically the same things repeat. Endives, kales. This is a granat Chinese cabbage. One of my favorites. Gorgeous, gorgeous tomatoes. Purple cabbage. So yeah, lots of great things. Okay, I just went and grabbed a couple handfuls of like baby arugula and kale and mustards. Actually, I'm gonna grab some more mustards. Uh, some endive, some really strong, flavorful herbs because I wanna just jazz this salad up a little bit. And you can take about a third of your baby greens off without stressing out a plant. You don't wanna take more than a third. It'll stress the plant too much and slow things down and eventually cause it to just not grow well at all. But if you are in the season I am in where you don't have a lot of huge things to harvest, well, I had a lot of huge things. I just need more for this party. Um, or, you want, or you want more flavor in your salad like I'm doing right now, it's okay to take about a third off of all of those plants and then that adds up to some incredible flavor when you're putting a salad together. Oh. Okay, so we like to use Christmas to not buy a bunch of things we don't need, but to kind of revamp the things that we have or to make them function better. So everything's a mess right now because we're redoing this whole garage. We keep long-term food storage in here, um, supplies, toilet paper and things. I like to keep a minimum of a year supply of everything we use just in case of emergencies. It's like a savings account, but tangible in here. So we're going to be reorganizing where the towers go. And then my son's using Christmas as an opportunity to up his gym space. Um, I'm up, upping some of the gym equipment for myself because we often get in a situation where we can't leave here and we want to make sure we have everything we need to be able to function, like work out at the level we would like to work out at while we're here because our gym is so far. It takes, it takes 35 minutes to get to the gym and it's not always possible if there's ice and snow. And sometimes we just don't wanna go. Sometimes our schedule is just busy and to squeeze in over an hour of travel time just to get to the gym can be complicated. So we're ramping up the gym and then ramping up the kitchen, like I said, but not fancy, just, uh, redoing it to make it more functional. So I like to buy things used when possible. So all our gym equipment that's coming is used and this stove was used. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. So these are, this is the legs, this is the base. How cute is that? So it's got these really cute legs and I love that I can sweep and vacuum underneath the stove. It's just one of my pet peeves is to have things, furniture and things that you can't clean underneath because we know what's under there and it's never pretty. So this has got some rust on it, which is totally fine with me. Um, I don't mind the rust. I actually think it adds character. And I'm gonna shine this up. I found some polish that the company said, actually this company's not around anymore, but there were some sites still available from the company that talked about a polish you could use to just shine it up and make it look clean, but it's very cool. 
So those are the legs. Let's take a look at the stove. Okay, so I have to put you guys kind of on a weird angle in order to see the whole stove. So if it looks a little distorted, that's why. But this is it right here. And a few reasons I chose this stove. For one, I was looking at new stoves and just didn't like anything I saw. Um, I just didn't like them. There was nothing interesting that, that was in my budget. Now there's some that were really interesting if you have tens of thousands of dollars, obviously. But we actually don't cook a tremendous amount of food in an oven. Um, we use the stovetop mostly. I actually was looking for a smaller oven. We had a small oven when we lived in our camper and I absolutely loved it because I have found in the stove we have right now, the oven, um, we only use two thirds of it and the other third is where all the mess was. Like it just made it big, bigger and more to clean, but we never even used that last third. So I was intentionally seeking out a smaller stove or a smaller oven when I was looking. Um, the problem with that is then I'm ripping out a cabinet next to it, but it was changing the dimensions of things that were gonna fit in there. And most stoves are designed, or ovens, I keep calling it a stove oven, whatever, are designed to slide in. And I didn't want that either because I plan on putting furniture in there instead of just cabinets. So their most oven stove combos are designed for cabinets. So this one isn't, and this is why this one was so cool. And the oven is small, which is really important to me because that part of my ideas of simple living, a lot of people, there are a lot of people who live way more simple, way more simpler, is that the word, more simple than we do in this area. And there's people that live way more elaborate than we do. To me, the simple living is more about managing things in a way that feels simple. So can I grow all of our own food or the majority of our food without being overwhelmed and buried in chores and having to do overwhelming tasks? Yes, because I grow on the towers and allows me to chip away at things very slowly. So even though our life is kind of a mess and we've got projects right now, I can still just chip away at growing food slowly year round. Same thing with the oven. The smaller oven allows me to cook the things we want to cook, uh, not have a lot of food waste because I do like to keep our food sim super simple. And then I don't get overwhelmed having to clean something like this. So let's take a look at this awesome stove. So this is a Heartland and it is a gas stove. So it's designed to look like a wood burning stove. And I love that because it fits into, it's into our rustic log cabin. It kind of fits into that whole look of our lifestyle. And they do make these in a wood stove version or they did make these in a wood stove version. And everything's the same. So the wood stove version looks exactly like this. It just doesn't have the gas on top. It just has the flat top because you're cooking off the heat of the, um, the wood. And then in the wood stove, it's configured differently and has a wood box on it or has a fire box on it. So designed to look like a wood stove. So it fits that look I'm going for. It's also on legs and has this part up here. So it looks like furniture, which is the other thing I was going for. Can we take all the cabinets out and just piece our kitchen together with the vintage furniture that functions a little bit better for our family? So this fits that I can actually move this anywhere I want which is nice. I don't have to have that slide in section with cabinets like we typically do with an oven stove combo. So love that. Um, and so again, this is sitting on the floor. It weighs so much. It is incredibly heavy, which I love that because you know, that just means it's durable. So we've got wood handle and we've got our temperature gauge so we know what our oven's running at and then inside first off it was super clean this was in a fancy pool house and they just were getting rid of everything in the fancy pool house when they were remodeling so great condition As you can see it's small there's no wasted space in this and it's deeper so I can still do two sourdough loaves of bread i was measuring that out i would have to take this rack out and there's room for pizzas and whatever we want to eat in here it's just not crazy crazy big which i like so cute look at this thing it is a beast it'll shine up it needs a little buffing 
And then down here, this is a warming tray. Again, needs to be cleaned up, but, but you've got the tray here. And then this slides. And there's a section down there just to keep food warm. Probably not to use that, but that's okay. I might even just use it for storage, we'll see. Up here, the gas parts, the grill tops are over there. All right, and then the stove top, I don't have all these on right now, but you've got your grill tops and four burners, magnetic or a metal back. So I can hang my knives up there and put a magnetic strip and just keep, I only keep like three knives and I'm upgrading my knives as part of this kitchen renovation. And they'll go on there. The knobs, everything's just, everything's just so unique on this. Different, something you don't see every day. Very, very durable and firm. Feels very solid. And then what this is, is a light under here. And there's some mechanical components in here. In here, there is enough room for 12 large I'm getting, um, I keep my spice jars. I just refill them from Azure Standard. So I've got these tall, skinny, uh, pretty nice size spice jars and 12 of them will fit in this, which is awesome. It also has storage on the top. So this is where I plan to keep my cast iron for my sourdough. And I'm gonna keep my sourdough start just up on the top and something else who knows what else we'll put up there so it gives me extra space since I'm no longer gonna have upper cabinets so that's it super fun if you guys want to see what the kitchen looks like afterwards we've gone through several phases with our kitchen um, this won't be the final one. I'm not gonna replace where the sink is yet, I don't think, but we'll see. So I'll keep you guys posted if you wanna see a kitchen go from a normal kitchen with kitchen cabinets and all the standard kitchen uh, layout to just furniture in a kitchen and some unique pieces. Stay tuned for that video. It will be coming out probably in February. I think it's gonna take me that long to do all the things I need to do to get all of this in place and get everything. I have to patch things up. This needs some repairs. So I have to work on repairs and all of that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and make this salad. I'm gonna set up a whole harvesting station when we redo this garage. Nothing fancy, I'm just, I'm just gonna make sure I keep my baskets out here to make this a little easier. Or I could just go in the house to get a basket, but that would be too reasonable. All right, let's put our lights back down. Grab my water bottle and let's go. All right, guys, can you envision the stove now? No uppers, no microwave, all of that'll be gone. It's gonna be so cute. I'm excited to share with you guys. So let's get this lettuce washed and cleaned up. Okay, I'm gonna use a salad spinner to get it nice and dry. That is the key to lettuce that's gonna last a little bit longer. Um, but first, we're just gonna soak it in some cold water. Okay, and I tend to have aphids this time of year because the garage isn't sealed and we just have aphids in this area. So I add a pinch of salt to my water and that will get rid of anything um, that might be on your produce. You can do that with food grown outside as well. I don't have to do it very often outside. The only time I do it is if I think there might be aphids or caterpillars. So just a pinch. All right, and then we're gonna go Any leaves, I don't love the way they look. I'm just gonna put them 
feed them to the chickens and I feed my rock wool to the chickens. I'm just gonna cut these. Listen, so crisp. It's really, really gorgeous. So this salad is going to be simple. I'll show you guys how to spin it out and walk you through the steps to make sure you have crispy lettuce. I'm just going to whip up a homemade dressing and make homemade croutons. actually made some yesterday and I'm gonna whip up some more this is just a good olive oil or avocado oil because I did cook these so I make homemade bread and I just chop it up and I put in a good avocado oil um, some basil onion powder garlic powder salt and pepper and they are amazing so I'm gonna just sort of make this a homemade Italian dressing simple um, salad just to, to meet everybody's preference and then on the side I'll shave some Parmesan cheese for those who eat cheese they can sprinkle that on keeping it nice and simple so here's part of our kitchen where we did change out the cabinets and put in furniture this is a piece of furniture it was like a buffet that I found on Facebook marketplace we got rid of the top and it had a hutch on it um, fit great and then this is just a butcher block that I stained had a friend cut it for me these are some old cabinets that were in our basement that we built out and framed in to make them look a little bit more like furniture these are actually the only cabinets they'll stay in the kitchen and my sourdough which, which will go on that little part of my stove top when we get the new stove in but down here is my bread machine and I will post some information on bread but um, there's been some recent discoveries on some really disgusting things in store-bought bread. Some rumors going around. So really just unclean, really disgusting things. So making my own bread is one of the ways that I just simplify our life and it's something that's so easy to do. This is a Zojirusi. I uh, bought it used. Works amazing. I've had it for 10 years and it was several years old, three years old when I bought it. These things, if you can buy the right equipment, they last forever. So I cook our bread in here and I just plug it in and unplug it when we're done. And it's stores great. And, and just look at that gorgeous loaf. So we're gonna make our cute croutons out of this put my bread recipe in the description below if you're interested in that this is five ingredients super simple i just put it in the machine i'll also put the model number because this thing has been amazing it cooks bread for us many times a week for years and years and years all you do is put the ingredients in and walk away it does all the work for you so i'll put the name of that in the bottom below if you're interested
Just one? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Welcome. Just one. Need a salt. So beautiful. So with lettuce, if you grow too many baby greens that aren't the right varieties, they can be really soft. Baby greens are a tender version of lettuce. And so a lot of my greens that I harvested were leaf lettuce, which is a softer lettuce. And I felt like it was a little bit too soft. Um, I want this to be a substantial salad. So a trick to that is to do what I did. Add parsley, which the parsley smells amazing in the salad. Swiss chard leaves. I added some beet leaves. And then I went back out and I had a mature kale plant on there. And I harvested some mature kale leaves and just cut any of the big leaves up and made them smaller. And this has rounded out my salad quite a bit. So I'll show you guys. So now we have soft greens, lime greens, reds kale i'm going to remove any stems that i see from the hardier kale and this just gives us lots of color that was that um red russian kale so just lots lots of flavors lots of color lots of variety we're going to spin this out flying lettuce. One more. Now that our lettuce is spun, we're gonna do a couple of things. Okay, so I'm gonna stick this in the fridge and let it dry and get good airflow. And then I'll show you how to store it until you're ready to eat it. So it stays nice and crisp. All right, so my lettuce is nice and dry. Not 100%, but that's okay because I'm putting it on a towel. Nice and cool. I am just going to break it up a little bit to bite-sized pieces so that people don't have to chop this and because some of it's baby greens and some of it's larger kale. Make sure there's no stems through and fluff these as we put them in. They've been kind of condensed. So I like to re-fluff them. All right, now all we're gonna do is wrap it up like this. And tomorrow when I get there, I will dump it into this bowl to serve it. I'm going to shave some Parmesan and put that on the side. I'm going to make some more croutons. We'll put those on the side. A homemade Italian dressing. And we are good to go with this gorgeous nutrient-dense salad.